I began running, I was 12 years old, and I loved running cross country in, uh, at school. In the beginning, when we arrived in Chamonix, we opened a music store. It was the best way for me to know everybody in the valley. I did a lot of uh, competition in cross-country ski, but uh, I always keep running. I saw the registration growing little by little. We think it was completely crazy. In the 70s, we had here in Chamonix uh, some guys who, who accomplished the Tour du Mont Blanc. And uh, I was really interested to try to do the same thing, to this amazing thing, to run or walk all around the Mont Blanc non-stop. So I tried this in uh, 1995. I failed, but uh, there was uh, something in my mind and this thing stayed and uh, this thing made me discover ultra running uh, five years later and this thing is a big, big explanation of the uh, uh, creation of the UTMB. An individual non-stop race all around the Mont Blanc and that's why uh, I said, OK, I'm very, very interested by organizing such a race, but I really want also to race it. The first year when we decided to make uh, the race, and because I was the only one who wasn't uh, running, they look at me and they say, OK, you stay in Chamonix and you are the race director like that. You wait for everybody to come back. In the beginning, I tried to announce the race everywhere on uh, all the websites I found. And uh, I say, OK, if we are lucky, we have uh, 300 runners. And uh, we arrive to 300 and uh, we say that maybe 500 uh, will be a little bit difficult and uh, there were 722 on the start line. All people here uh, in Chamonix or in the overtones in Switzerland and Italy thought that we were crazy to imagine such a race. Yes, we, we thought that it could be a wonderful event and we worked a lot for that, but uh, uh, the result uh, is, uh, I don't know, I would to say it in English, but it's far, far, far uh, up uh, of what we imagined at the beginning. I grew up uh, touching distance from Mont Blanc. And uh, the fact is, when I opened the door of my house, it was always at being attractive for any kind of activities. It's naturally that uh, in winter time, I went on snow and play a lot with snow. All of the season was going in the mountain, walking, running. It was much more going off the track, off everything, sometimes climbing. The inspiration of Hokia came from many sources and obviously nature is, is a big part of it. Uh, connection to the mountains, traveling through the mountains with different tools. Jean-Luc and I, uh, also Christophe and a few other people in the team, grew up ski racing or free skiing. Adrenaline, freedom, passion. So maybe it was meant to be, but you know, like, the first Hoka 
address headquarters office was here and the UTMB trade was right here and I'm sure they, it inspired us. There was this uh, UTMB 2007 race I ran and I did, I did fairly well. I led the race, which is unbelievable with 200 and 2,500 people chasing you through the night, through the day, until midday. And uh, unfortunately, I realized that uh, kilometer 135 at my quads were done from the pounding. I tried to charge it for 16 hours like I would charge like a ski race. And then the serious pain and um, a trouble began. The following weeks and months were extremely difficult to recover and we were already thinking uh, that one day maybe it would be cool to start something together and that, that uh, running shoes, footwear would be a good route to explore. There hadn't been much innovation. We did use the inspiration and the learnings from many other sports to say, okay, there's something to do that probably in terms of evolution didn't touch running and trekking as it has touched other like mountain bike, like skiing, like golf, etc. So we make the, the shoe a reality. We are in uh, August 2009, the less than a year that Hoka exists. We went to the UTAB trade show. We know that what was critical is make people feel and test the product. We had a small booth over there and uh, we put some small stones and piece of branch in front of the booth. The purpose was not to tell a big blah 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 speech to make them convinced, but it was try to walk on the stones and branch with your actual shoes, then go on the seat, change the shoe, use one of the protos and repeat the same scenario on the same stones. And for anybody, it was a big wow. We end up by having seven runners with this shoe. We had the discussion to say, are you sure? Because you prepare yourself for years. And it was uh, unbelievable to imagine that this kind of uh, runners switch 24 hours before the race for a new pair of shoes. Ultimately, we were right because this movement went. Okay, it's probably the most natural partner we can imagine because the brand was born just here uh, by people from Les Contamines or from NC, just, just uh, neighbors. We know very well Oka from a long time. Oka born in uh, the Mont Blanc and uh, on UTMB quite in the same moment than the UTMB itself. So I think uh, it's a sign. It's a really good sign. One thing we share with uh, the founders of uh, UTMB is that it's, it's a lot about people. It's a lot about um, um, creating a very inspired community around like a, a passion and going step by step. We spend uh, uh, 10 years to work very hard to develop UTMB Mont Blanc. We, we said okay it, it could be amazing to gather the best trail running races in the world in a kind of worldwide circuit and the uh, UTMB World Series is the second life of this. Uh, we made some mistakes uh, we tried some uh, other things. It was time to uh, rethink uh, the whole circuit and that's why now it's uh, UTMB World Series. For both OCA or UTMB, there's this uh, forward thinking uh, mindset, which is key, but all in all, there, it looks for me so natural that uh, one day we connect our destiny and we continue to try to invent what could be uh, the day after tomorrow.